Siege. I'm a student at the University of Toronto. Today I'm going to be doing the German Walk Toronto that's hosted by the German consulate here. Come along with me as I visit some arts and culture sites here in the city. But so this is the building that the German consulate is housed within. At this part of the tour you're hearing an introduction about the German consulate and its work in the city and also about the street we're on which is Young Street. Um, funny enough in the audio tour it says <laughs> Uh, Toronto lacks a lot of what Berlin has because our <laughs> sites are not quite as rich in culture in such a small geographic area as Berlin is. Um, but they talk about how a lot of the taverns and live music sites here in Young Street are um, really important to German heritage and Toronto's history. Traveled farther down Young and then up a little bit Charles Street East and there's this beautiful mural that's the second stop on the tour. It's a piece by Justice Becker, a German artist uh, here that was painted a couple years ago. And if you look, you can see two city skylines painted in the sunglasses. One is Frankfurt and one is Toronto. So this piece was painted in 2019 and uh, as part of a street art effort. And there's going to be a sister piece painted in Frankfurt where you'll see this, the, the dual skylines again. So we'll have a skyline from each city in their sister city which is a really cool project. Um, I definitely recommend coming to see this mural. It's super close by to everything and it's really beautiful. So now we've walked down Bloor Street onto Park Road, which actually is a place I have not yet been to Toronto. And we've got this beautiful building here that's 21 and 23 Park Road. Um, it used to be the Advanced School of Contemporary Music and it was originally opened um, in the earlier 1900s by legendary jazz musician Oscar Peterson. Next we have Asquith Green Park. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, but if you look, we've got a couple pieces um, that were installed. One of them is a postmodern contemporary frame, and then we've got some deer there as well. Those are all pieces done by an artist, John McEwen, in 1969, I believe, um, and he calls them the Tree of Life. So he's got his couple pieces here. Honestly, this I would say is my least favorite part of the tour so far. The area here isn't that great, um, and the building, 21 and 23 Park Road, um, is in pretty bad disrepair, um, and I think there is a shelter that's housed in there right now, so I, I wouldn't bother them. Um, I don't think this is a place to necessarily be bringing tourists, honestly, so this is probably my first stop I'm a little critical of on the tour so far. Okay, so our next stop is the Toronto Reference Library. It was designed by Raymond Moriyama, I believe is how it's pronounced, um, in 1977, which is really cool. The exterior is really beautiful. Um, the tour actually invites you to go in and take the elevator up and see the ant farm, <laughs> which I think is referring to all these people studying there, which I think is really cool. Um, and it also describes the Toronto Reference Library as kind of the brain of Toronto, which I think is awesome. Okay. Recap for the Toronto Reference Library. First of all, I can't believe I've never been. That was so cool. <laughs> um, it took me a while to find the entrance though, which was a bit confusing. Um, you can go in um, even if you don't have a library card or anything. And I liked it on the tour. It says go up the elevator and see like the ant farm, like I said before. So awesome. I'm gonna insert a clip before this probably for you guys to see. It's actually really cool. It's totally an ant farm. <laughs> All right, now we're heading just a, a bit farther down Young to go see the Masonic Temple. So here is the Masonic Lodge. It was constructed in 1918 and it has done a bunch of really cool stuff. First of all, it sits at 888 Young Street, which is already very interesting. That's like a really cool street number. <laughs> um, so it originally was used, um, since it's, it's a pretty old building, it was originally used for Masonic Lodges. I'm gonna have to look up what that means. Um, lodgings and it was rented out after that and then in the 60s here people called it the rock pile which is interesting because it does kind of look like a rock pile but I think also because of the type of music that was being played here because it started to be used as a music venue and was kind of the heart of music and rock music for Yorkville and for Toronto um, into the 70s 80s 90s it was used for by a bunch of bands and famous TV shows to host practice and they now call it the concert hall and have a bunch of concerts here and the tour tells you all about a bunch of famous artists um, including Led Zeppelin who have played here over the years so while we're walking to the town hall square I just googled Masonic Lodge and it is exactly what it sounds like it's also called a private lodge or a 
constituent lodge and it refers to a place where Freemasons used to uh, meet and organize. So here is the town hall square. It's a garden set between um, some condos and then the Toronto Public Library. It was built by the Janet Rosenberg firm, which is an architectural landscape firm. Uh, the park is really beautiful. It's very small. Um, a lot of people have their dogs here. Now we're going to go check out the tour includes um, the original crest, the coat of arms, excuse me, so we're gonna go check that out next. Okay, I've decided this is my favorite stop so far for two reasons. One, the tour directs you to see this original uh, coat of arms here, and that, um, there's a couple different items on there. There's a barrel, there's an anvil, a sheep's head, and those represent the original professions of the counselors at the time. Um, from this old firehouse. It's decorated beautifully. Right next door is the garden the tour is referring to and because it's December right now it's decked out beautifully for Christmas. Um, I'll show you guys here. Look how gorgeous. So this is definitely my favorite stop on the tour so far. I thought the reference library was really cool but this is gorgeous. So we are now at the Hazelton Hotel which as you can see is uh, rather glamorous, but it's funny because the audio tour says that um, before Yorkville became what it is now, which is a pretty um, wealthy neighborhood or area of Toronto, it used to be very bohemian here, which is hard to believe in its present state, but it says where the Hazelton Hotel is now a coffee shop used to be here that would um, infamously host jazz performers and they had a, a pool out back and it was like the center and of um, like affordable party culture for Toronto. Um, and the tour gets actually pretty critical at this point because it says, um, it mentions that Berlin has a nightmare, um, basically making sure that partying stays affordable for everybody in Berlin. And it kind of alludes to the fact that Toronto doesn't have that and there's no way to affordably party in Yorkville anymore. So it's kind of erased this history that Yorkville used to have in the 60s. Um, and they say that turning point kind of came in 1970 with the installation of the Four Seasons Hotel here. So I hope the wealth is kind of translating on camera here. I'm gonna take some photos also of the neighborhood here, but it is definitely uh, one of the major hubs of wealth for the city of Toronto. So our next stop, and this will really show you guys um, the glamor of Yorkville, is Yorkville Park Big Rock. Um, which is actually I have been to before. It's very close to some of our dorms here at U of T. Um, I was in St. Mike's and it was kind of right behind my dorms. It's really beautiful and I bet you it'll be super decked out for Christmas. So this will be kind of... Sorry, my camera accidentally stopped recording. I was just gonna say this should be kind of a really cool experience. So I am excited. Interesting to note, right after that stopped recording, as I was walking down the street talking about the wealth of Yorkville, a group of very well-dressed people walked by me and started laughing <laughs> because of what I was saying. So it's definitely an interesting tour so far. We are here. So starting off on the edge, they've got all these beautiful, huge trees that actually I don't remember if they were here before or not, but they are stunning. And as you see ahead, there is a huge Christmas setup. Look at this beautiful large Christmas tree that's all lit up and all of these little trees here are wrapped in lights um, as we get closer you'll see and there is a little light walk actually so here is the reason we are here this is a 700 ton a seven yes a 700 ton granite outcrop here um, it was completed in uh, 1994 with the rest of this park and it's actually part of a landscape design by the Olson Warland Architects. Um, as you can see, we've got more beautiful lights here. Um, it actually says that this whole park used to be a parking lot, um, which is interesting, but it says it was a glamorous parking lot because it backed up against the, where the Toronto International Film Festival used to be held. So um, this is a really beautiful part of Toronto. I think this is a really cool part of the tour. There's a bunch of shops and cafes nearby. Uh, yeah, and I have actually have hung out here before, <laughs> so it's a really beautiful place to come and visit. 
Okay, so here I have, what's your name? Elena. Elena, and I'm gonna ask her a quick question. So Elena, what do you think of this park is the first question. Um, I love this park. I actually used to live here last year for a year, like my first time living on my own. Um, and That's in the awesome. winter, yeah, thanks. And in, in the winter, it's even more beautiful. Because mm -hmm, it's all decorated? Yeah, exactly. What do you think a tourist would think if this was like their first impression of Toronto, was like seeing all this? Um, first impression, this is kind of like the rich area mm -hmm. of Toronto. Yeah. I don't know if it really represents it, um, but I love it. <laughs> I know, it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think, I think it should definitely be a stop. Or okay. like any tourist, yeah. Yeah. That and that and Young and more than that. So oh, interesting. Like Eaton Center, I think. Yeah, Eaton Center should be a stop. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, but I love it. I mm -hmm. I don't live here anymore, but I just come here to visit. Just mm -hmm. the nostalgia and everything. Yeah. It is definitely one of my favorite neighborhoods of Toronto. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, we are now heading to our second to last stop on the audio tour and it is the colonnade on Bloor Street so let's go check it out. Okay so actually we're doing the last stop on the tour second to last just because I took a wrong turn and this way is easier to get get back to my apartment after actually so the last stop on the tour we're gonna do right now and then the second to last we're gonna do right after this. So the last stop on the tour is at this corner of Bloor and Queens Park and the first thing is the ROM which is the Royal Ontario Museum. It is absolutely beautiful. It talks about the architect who designed the huge um, glass piece that is sticking out of the side of the older building. Um, this is a really famous museum in Toronto. Everyone goes here as a history student. Everyone talks about the ROM. I feel like everyone goes at some point. Um, a lot of families love coming here with their small children. It's got all types of exhibits. Um, most notably like natural history exhibits which I know are really popular. It also discusses on the tour a slightly lesser known museum but my personal favorite in Toronto which is the Gardner Museum which is right around the corner. It's not this building, it's the one right next to it. I'll take us, oops, I'll take us over closer to see that since it's my favorite. It is a super famous ceramics museum here in Toronto. Um, it's basically on the U of T campus. I love it. I highly recommend visiting it. I think this is a great spot to bring people at the end of their tour because there's this is kind of the heart of, arguably the heart of arts and culture in this section of Toronto, all these museums nearby. And the third building it points out is this huge, beautiful building that I never knew what it was because there's it's no longer used for U of T classes, but it is really close to our campus. And across the top it says Department of Household Science. And on the tour it actually says it did used to be a part of the U of T campus and was the Department of Household Science for U of T. So that is really interesting. It's a beautiful, beautiful building um, because of like the style and the columns. Um, the last building the tour points out at this point is the Park Hyatt Hotel, which is a bit farther down the street. It talks about how um, over the years with the Toronto International Film Festival, so many celebrities have stayed there and, um, you know, gotten drinks on the rooftop bar there, which is um, really cool for Toronto. So this would be the last stop normally. I think this is a great place to end the tour. Um, personally, you've got so many things here to visit and so many things that I know I love to visit right in this corner, so this is perfect. All right, now let's go hit the supposed to be second to last stop, the Colonnade colonnade on Bloor Street. So this is our last stop. It's called the Colonnade and it was created in the 60s, I believe 1963 the tour says. Okay, so sorry my camera cut out. So the Colonnade is notable because it was one of the first 24-hour uh, kind of living projects um, in Toronto and it was kind of designed to be a space that you didn't have to leave because it was residential, retail, and restaurant all in one space. Um, and the fact that that happened in the 60s um, and then into the 70s is at the same point when Toronto kind of made the shift from Bohemian to more upper upscale, um, especially in the area of Yorkville. So that kind of seems to be a key underlying theme of this tour is this shift in Toronto that happened um, in around the early 70s. 
Um, so that's definitely very interesting. I really like this stop and I highly recommend it.